Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you everybody that submitted questions on my House Charlie video. Everyone's really excited to meet Samwell's family. I'm hoping they turn into a version of the Tyrells. You know, people that you meet a little bit in one season and then become much bigger in the following season. I think a lot of that will just depend on how much they follow their book plot. On to questions though. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen season 5 yet. So here we go. Jamie asks, Who do you think the first houses to side with Danny will be? Do you think there'll be any major houses that would actively oppose her? Well, I would think, you know, the houses to support Danny first would be the ones that hate the existing powers that be, namely the Baratheons, you know, which represent the Crown and the Lannisters. So who hates the Lannisters the most right now? I would say the Martells are towards the top of the list, if not at the actual top. The Starks are probably at the actual top, but there's not much of a House Stark right now. They're all kind of scattered to the Four Winds. You could lump the Tyrells in there too, but they already have a claim to the throne through Marjorie. So if Daenerys came in, they'd definitely be out. It'd be kind of hilarious if Daenerys did come in and the Tyrells backed away. They said, okay, you know, Marjorie, you can't be queen anymore. But they tried to marry one of the other Tyrell sons to her. Even though the show hasn't done all the Tyrell sons, they, they could magic sum up. Just be like, oh, we just, you know, we hadn't introduced them yet, but they still exist. And we can probably assume that the biggest opposition to Daenerys would be the Lannisters, just because they control the throne right now. Next question, MDB asks, so you actually had like a really long question that I'm just going to condense down. You're just asking like how fast are the White Walkers going to make it to the wall? Because it seems like they should be moving faster than they actually are. During the Battle of Hardhome, we see the Night's King order an army of Whites over that cliff. So it's pretty clear they can move really fast. If there's only going to be eight seasons, then I would hope that they would actually spend all of season eight south of the wall. Meaning it'd be like a season seven WTF moment. I know of at least two big battles that are probably happening in season six in different places. So I'm not expecting a repeat of the Battle of Hardhome. I mean, I think we'll see White Walkers, but I, I don't think it's going to be the exact same type of thing where there's like a big fight with them. But what we might see at the end of season six is them in eye shot of the wall. As in, oh my God, they're right here. But then, you know, save like the big, you know, wall crashing moment till season seven. It's one of those things we know is going to happen. It's just we don't know how fast that they're going to make it happen. They could drag it out as much as they want. There, there's definitely some confirmed WTF stuff happening south of the wall in season six. So they might just use those for their big action set pieces. If you look at big blockbuster movies, sometimes studios will do that. Like if they have a couple really big hits and they make billions and billions of dollars in a year, but they know they have another big hit that they're going to be releasing later, sometimes they'll hold that movie till the next year. They actually ended up doing that with one of the Harry Potter films. Warner Brothers made too much money in one year because of Dark Knight, so they actually pushed a Harry Potter film that had been finished to the next year. Like it just sat on a shelf so that Warner Brothers could guarantee a hit in a non-Dark Knight year. It's kind of hard to say how big their army needs to be because it doesn't seem like it takes very long for the Night's King to raise new whites. And, and each individual White Walker can do that themselves anyway. So even if their undead army isn't that big, they could go into battle against another force and as people die, raise them so it's just like you slowly turn the tide and their army gets bigger and bigger through the course of said battle. Next question, Zuri asks, how old is Gilly's baby at the end of season five? I wonder why the baby isn't a toddler yet. That's like the, the same thing where it's like, how come Samwell hasn't lost weight if he's been at the wall for so long and there's no food? I think what they're doing with the baby at a simplicity's sake is just kind of compressing time and saying, you know, it hasn't been a full year, but it is getting bigger. So if Gilly and the baby end up surviving to season eight, I, I do think that we will see a recast actor. Like we'll see a much bigger child. Next question, Tim asks, I'm, you actually had two questions. I'm going to answer the second one. How are the Tarly brothers in terms of brotherly bond? I would say I would say fairly normal. Sam's brother isn't really fleshed out in the books that much, but he seems like your typical bro. He doesn't come off as a giant asshole the way Randall Tarly does, but he seems like a pretty typical teenager. So unless the TV show changes something, I think they'll have a relatively normal relationship. Like the same kind of relationship he has with his sisters and his mother. I, th I think most of the fire in his family is going to be coming from Randall. Next question though, Crystal asks, do you think that his father might be slightly proud of Sam because he's trying to become a maester? I would say, you know, definitely not at all. Like he actually forbid him from becoming a maester, according to Sam. I think the big question is, is what is that family reunion going to be like? Like, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I came to be a maester. Wait, you mean that thing that I told you that you were never allowed to do? What will probably end up happening is that his father will disown him and the rest of his family will be gently accepting of his situation, as well as Gilly and the baby. Next question, Jay asks, do you think there'll be a flashback, more specifically, Tarly's role as loyalists in the rebellion? We know there's going to be at least one flashback. It's been, I'll say unofficially confirmed, just because it looks like they're doing the Tower of Joy scene, but I don't think that's going to be Tarly related. 
They could totally do other flashbacks, but Dan and Dave, you know, a long time ago, Dan and Dave were like, we're not doing flashbacks. They relented. They did the Cersei flashback in season five, and it looks like they're at least doing the Arthur Dane flashback at the Tower of Joy. But I'll say no to Tarly flashback. I think, you know, most of the flashbacks will be central to like the bigger characters, like Jon Snow, maybe Daenerys, but, but really Daenerys doesn't get flashbacks. She gets visions. So maybe we'll see some more dragon visions. The problem is the more flashbacks you do, the less special they get. It just becomes a really casual thing, like, oh, we're just going to do a flashback for every single thing. Next question, Melissa asks, Episode 9, or very end of Episode 10 when something huge happens, Jon Snow resurrection? The Jon Snow stuff will probably happen way sooner than that, just based on stuff that's been happening in and around the set and rumors we've been hearing. This year we had Hard Home in Episode 8, then Episode 9 we had Drogon and Daznax Pit, and then Episode 10 we had the Jon Snow death. Those were all pretty successful, so I think they're actually going to try and do the same thing, where it's just like, it's no one specific big moment, there's just several over a couple of episodes. Next question, Luan asks, Since they've taken out a lot from the books, do you think they're going to do away with the great maester conspiracies? If you haven't read the books, there's just a theory that the maesters or the archmaesters of the Citadel have their own agenda that goes beyond the people that they serve in Westeros. If you don't know about maesters, their relationship is typically subservient. Like a maester will go serve the lord of a castle, anybody that rules the castle. So like if they're serving a Tyrell and someone goes and takes the castle from the Tyrell, they'll serve the new person that controls the castle. Their theories though that the archmaesters have their own ideas about the direction that Westeros should be taking. There hasn't really been any evidence of that on the show, so I am just assuming that they're completely doing away with that. But the real test of that will be what happens whenever Samwell goes to the Citadel. So once season 6 starts, we should learn pretty quickly, depending on whenever Samwell arrives there. Next question, Crosspock asks, What do you think about the pink letter? Who do you think wrote it? And what is its real purpose? Well, its real purpose was just to goad Jon Snow into a war. Now, the Pink Letter is something that the show hasn't really done, but they might end up doing the plot line later. In the books, it just, it happened before he was murdered. The Pink Letter itself is just a letter that's written on pink parchment that Jon Snow reads. In the letter, Ramsay implies that he's killed Stannis, defeated his army, is holding Mance Raider captive, and he has married Jon's sister, Arya Stark. So if you take the letter at base value and you think that Ramsay wrote it, it's just him saying, I've defeated Stannis' army, come and get some, bring me back what's mine. If you believe someone else wrote it, like Mance Raider or Littlefinger, then it's them trying to go Jon Snow into taking care of the Ramsay Bolton problem, of the Boltons in general. I'm inclined to think that the show is just going to play it straight. Ramsay will be the person that will send the letter that will go Jon Snow into a battle. But it's totally possible that Littlefinger could get off his ass and do something about it. It seems like something that he would do, like try to play two big forces against each other. He's already trying to play the crown against the Boltons. Next question, Anshu asks, Isn't Sam no longer a Knight's Guard? If he says he fathered a child with Gilly, does that mean that he'll be a contender to Horn Hill? Uh, no, uh, Samwell is still going to be part of the Night's Watch. I don't think that he's going to have enough time to become a maester anyway, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. He'll still probably be bound to his oath to the Night's Watch. Even if that weren't the case, I, I don't think that he would want Horn Hill anyway. I don't, I don't think he's someone that craves power. I think he'd be happy to abdicate that to his brother as long as he got to live with Gilly. I think Gilly is what he really wants, aside from saving the kingdom from certain doom. But thank you everyone for submitting questions. These are always a ton of fun to do. There has been a lot of pictures from the set. I'm not going to do a whole lot of spoilery videos about stuff like that, unless it's like something that I can talk about in a non-spoilery way. So if there's anything that you have big questions about that I haven't answered, just let me know in the comments. There's still a lot of filming to be done, so we're just going to continue to see pictures from the set. So don't be surprised if you hear about like really big characters doing big WTF things. You know, beware of spoilers though if you go looking for that stuff. But congratulations to this week's giveaway winner. Missa7, you win a $20 Amazon gift card. Be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. We're still a couple weeks away from A Night of the Seven Kingdoms being released in the United States. Once that does drop, I'll just replace the giveaway with that. You guys may have been reading about some House Tyrell stuff happening lately on the internet. You can actually click here to learn about a history of their family, and you can click here to learn all about resurrection in A Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.